This podcast is a Radio Mike original production. Head to radiomike.com.au to find out more. Welcome to 20th Century Boy. My name is Michael Combat, and this is the inside of my mind. Oh, welcome to another episode of 20th Century Boy. My name, of course, is actually Radio Mike, not Michael Combat, but each week on this podcast, someone sends in an alternative name. For me, Michael Combat, obviously a reference to Mortal Combat, the video game franchise that has just had a film adaptation in cinemas this week or last week that I saw. Uh, and that one actually came in from producer Pat. Uh, welcome to the RF producer Pat. I'll uh, play the sound effect for welcome to the RF and I will start fading down the podcast intro. And guys, really a uh, special thing uh, for today's app. Producer Pat, who obviously has worked on this show for the past four or five months and does an amazing job, happens to be in the room today. I've given him a mic for emergencies only, but Producer Pat, thank you for being here for the show today. Thank you for having me, Mike. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Pat has been here today because we were just doing some work today on a bunch of stuff around RM production. So Mike, uh, Pat, I'm Mike, Pat's Pat. Pat is just sitting in the corner of my room on a makeshift desk, which is actually a bedside table because we. Because I'm actually moving house like, to, well, by the time you guys hear this, I've moved house. I am no longer in this house. Uh, so there is all, this house is pretty much only... Like this is the only the set for this podcast is pretty much the only thing in the house and my bed. the The house is empty, uh, so Pat is sitting on my bedside table with his laptop. That it just I'm sorry, Pat. It looks so cramped. You don't look comfortable at all, are you? Uh look, it's not super uncomfortable, but like there's a there's a little hole down here for my uh for my leg to go through. And I gotta say, <laughs> it's not the most uncomfortable setup in the world. Like yeah. you could do considerably worse. Yeah, cool. Well, Pat, thank you so much for being here on the show. You might hear Pat on this episode uh, from time to time popping in. Um, lots to do on this week's show. Lots of stuff happening. And uh, I guess we will start as we always start, which is you do your 360 on this show. We are Australia's only and the world's only winnable podcast. Pat is looking at me. What's wrong, Pat? You're looking at no, me No, no, weird. keep going, keep going. Why? Just just keep going. All right, Pat, this is the Australia's only and the world's only winnable podcast. Do your 360 on the spot. I realize why Pat's looking at me weird. Basically, to win this podcast, if you are listening to this part of the podcast at this exact moment and you do your 360 on the spot, wherever you are in the world, if you're in Melbourne, you do a Mel 60. If you're in Sydney, you do a Sid 60. Pat, if you're in California, what do you do? Uh, a Cal 60, I believe. Or a Cali 60, <clears throat> whatever you'd want to call it. If you're in Tokyo, you do a Toke 60. If you're in, what's an obscure city? Pat? Uh, Latvia. If you're in Latvia, Lat 60, Dubbo, Dub 60, right? You do it. Now, generally, as I always say, if you do see me at this point in the podcast, you've won the podcast, come up to me, claim your prize. There is a big prize. The podcast ends forever. Pat, I realize you're being like, oh, I'm in the room right now. So I've won the podcast. You are, if you work on the show and this has not ever been stated, if you work on the show, you cannot win the podcast. So even like if I did happen to be out and about and like I wasn't working, like I was just on my break, you're on your break. I heard you. I was genuinely listening to that moment. Would I still win? Uh you would have to quit your job on the spot to claim the prize. Really? Which is like, you know, quite a big thing to do. Oh, but, you, but you could win, but you'd have to resign from your post. That's the decision you have to big make. Big move. So, yeah. I'll, um, I'll have to consider that. So yeah, make sure you do your, make sure you do your, your Rome 60. If, <laughs> if you're in Rome, let me know this week, uh, radiomikepod at gmail.com, where you're doing your 360 from. Are you doing a, you know, a dub 60, a Briz 60, a per 60, Perth and add a 60, Adelaide. Generally, you're most likely to win the podcast when you're doing, Pat, A, um, not paying attention. Mel yeah. 60. If you, yeah, sorry for doing my job. I'm I live so in Melbourne. It's very unlikely, particularly at the moment with COVID, that I will be anywhere other than Melbourne. But still do your Mel 60. Because going to say, Pat, and sorry, I said we're going to, we, you won't be on much, but you're already, it's the first five minutes you've been on for two of them. Yeah. The, the mic spots in public are becoming more and more frequent. Like people are spotting me and being like, you're radio mic. 
Often yeah. it's a voice recognition, right? People recognize my voice. However, uh, one thing I wanted to point out to all of you listening, every once in a well, I reckon every day in the last week, someone has sent me a message saying, hey, I just heard you doing an ad on the radio. Now, uh, there is an ad on the radio, presumably only on the Triple M and hit networks around Australia uh, for Hamish and Andy's Remembering Project, a podcast that I am a part of. And obviously, uh, I read the ads for that. Basically, just stuff like, this week on Hamish and Andy's Remembering Project, the boys are looking bad. Like, basically, I do that. I went into a studio like four weeks ago and spent like half an hour just doing every variation of that. So I have actually never heard the ads. Everyone is sending me messages being like, heard you on the radio, heard your voice on the radio, heard you on the radio, right? I've never heard the ads. So yesterday, no joke, I actually went for a drive and I was like, for the first time in my life, I'm like, I'm changing the station if it's not ads. Like, I'm only going to the station playing ads because I'm like, I want to hear this ad. It must be playing once every bloody, I don't know, 10 minutes because every day I'm getting a message. Drove around for like an hour, didn't hear the ad once. So I am still yet to hear the ad that everyone is hearing of me being like, this week on Hamish and Andy, oh, the boys are bloody up to all no good this. So... If you've heard that ad or if you hear that ad when you're driving in your car, please record as much of it as possible and send it to me so I can actually hear what's going out there into the world. That is my mission for you guys this week. Guys, there is a segment. There, there, okay, this this podcast, I'm sure you will agree, which I haven't done my actual intro, which is that this podcast is a podcast about me, Radio Mike. It is an AV log, an audio visual log. Full videos of this go up on my YouTube channel, Radio Mike. This is an AV log. Uh, about me, my life as a 26-year-old person trying to make his way through the rough and tumble of living life. Uh, and the rough and tumble of living life has been pretty, pretty tricky. Uh, obviously, with the move, it's really annoying. I'm moving back to my parents for a bit because we got booted out of this uh, house for reasons beyond our control, uh, which is an off-air conversation. If you'd like to talk about it, I will let you know, but I'm not going to talk about it on air. So I'm moving back to my parents. So I have to like basically set up my podcast set at my parents and do my podcast in future when my parents are like, my dad's like working inside and I'm just going to be talking about Kermit the Frog and my dad's going to be doing his proper job and he'll be like, what are you doing, mate? And I'll just continue to be the disappointing son of the family. But anyway, that's totally fine. Uh, On this podcast, there are lots of regular segments, segments within segments within segments. Pat, what's your favorite segment in the history of the show out of interest? That is a good question. I've been listening since like day one. And I mean, look, uh, my favorite part of the podcast used to be the characters uh, who you can see in the Mike's podcast exclusive to patreon.com forward slash radio Mike. Please give us money. Yes. Um, But I don't know, man. I really can't pick a favorite. There's so many good ones. What's one that comes to mind? Uh, what? Oh, I think Pokemon Australia edition was a great thing. I think the yeah, yeah. Well, you know what you were supposed to say? <laughs> a segment we haven't done in a while, and it's called Lost in Translation. Lost in Translation. It's Lost in Translation. You knew we were doing it, Pat. That's why I was kind of baiting you to just say it so I could press the opener. You didn't. He didn't catch on, guys. Yeah, well, you, you can never. You on. can never trust your editors, can you? Yeah. Uh, Lost in Translation. A segment we. I don't think we've done Lost in Translation in 2021. I think this is Lost in Translation's first uh, appearance for the year. Uh, how does Lost in Translation work? I hear you ask. Oh, I didn't realize you were asking me. Yeah, I was um, asking you. Hang on, is it, isn't this your podcast? <laughs> okay, Lost in Translation is this great segment on the show, if I do say so myself. It came out of my brain. Uh, basically, Lost in Translation. I choose a famous song. Pat, name a famous song. You need to be on your feet more, Pat. Hey Jude by the Beatles. Be, hey Jude by the Beatles. Great example. Hey Jude by the Beatles. I choose a famous song. Hey Jude by the Beatles. I choose like a, a known part of that song. I take the lyrics. I put them into Google Translate. I translate them between... 20 different languages and back to English and whatever is spat out by Google, I then play to you. You then have to decode the song that was translated. Basically, you have to figure out what that song originally was and what lyrics I originally put into Google. A hard game has proved difficult for listeners of the podcast in the past. Some listeners have had a pretty much perfect run. They've got every single one because sometimes I do give clues. So 
This week, uh, and for the first time in 2021, we are doing Lost in Translation to kick off the show because it's a ton of fun. How much fun is it, Pat? Oh, a whole lot of fun. Please don't fire me. Oh, well, I, I wanted specifics. It's a ton. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, basically, uh, this week, this week's Lost in Translation, here is uh, a couple clues for you. Basically, uh, this song is a well-known song for most people who were kids in the 90s. A lot of people who were kids in the 90s and early 2000s would know this song. But the clue a clue is this song would never have been at the top of any pop music chart or anything like that. Uh, but a lot of kids would have known this song and probably still know this song. So without further ado, uh, Google, could you please initiate the translation process protocol? Initiating translation process protocol. 22% complete. 50% complete. 77% complete. 100% complete. Translation result is I want to be good at being able to do this. It was my biggest problem. I want to be good at being able to do this. It was my biggest problem, is the lyrics that have been lost in translation. Your job is to figure out what the original song was. Pat, you look confused. Anything coming to your mind? Well, considering you said that children of the 90s would know it, I was born in 2000, so... So you won't know it. I didn't exist then. No, I will not know it at all. And I can't say that that rings any bells of any lyrics that sound uh, familiar. I would focus on the first sentence. I feel like the first sentence there is like the thing that hasn't been as lost in translation if uh, I if I quote the name of the segment. So yeah, focus a little bit on that. Let me know your answers by calling the podcast hotline 1-800-438-353. Here's the jingle for you. If you've got a contribution to the podcast, there's only one down Let's stop now so they actually hear it. 1-800-453-353. Now that's just confusing. It's 1-800-438-353. <laughs> uh, definitely give us a call if you know the answer. Let us know there. Leave a voice message. Uh, I wanted to do one very quick follow-up on last week where, uh, like often on this podcast, I exposed my ignorance of uh, any kind of sporting knowledge, essentially. Uh, and thank you to all the listeners who do fill me in, fill in the gaps of my lack of any sporting knowledge. Uh, we are now doing a new segment on the show, which is an AFL themed segment, uh, which is totally new for this show. It's called the best of James Brayshaw, who is an AFL commentator, uh, where we just look at some of the best commentating moments of James Brayshaw. And, uh, Look, I mentioned last week one of the best moments was sent in by Radio Blaz. Welcome to the Radio Family, Radio Blaz. Thanks for contributing. And uh, it was just basically uh, James Brayshaw pretty much just going, Sausage! 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 Just saying sausage. I remarked that I didn't know why he was saying sausage. To the rescue comes Radio Matt Noble. Welcome to the Radio Family, Matt Noble. Pat, why aren't you clapping for a new member? Oh, of the Radio I'm I'm Family? so sorry. Welcome, Please, Matt Noble. Well, Matt, Matt Noble, thank you. Uh, Radio Matt Noble on the YouTube version of the podcast sent a comment. A lot of footy hardcores dislike James Brayshaw. Can't see why. He seems amazing. So animated. How can you hate anyone who says sausage? Yeah, exactly right. Uh, they they dislike him for being a bit silly, and I mean yelling out sausage. A little bit silly. I would agree with that. A little bit of fun. But but Matt Noble goes on. Personally, I want the footy to be entertaining, not just straight-faced analysis, which is why I love James Brayshaw. Then in brackets, and get this, Pat, I don't know if you knew this, by the way, sausage equals goal. Really? A sausage in AFL is apparently a goal. I said, what is the logic between sausage being goal? It's like, uh, Matt Noble goes on, it's like a tally system, straight vertical lines look like snags, right? And basically like in AFL, there's four goalposts next to each other. So I guess they look like sausages. So I guess a goal is a sausage. That's the Aussiest thing to say. Oh yeah, it looks like a snag. We'll just call it a sausage. We'll just call it a sausage. So a goal is a sausage. Thank you, Matt Noble. Uh, Please feel free to send in at any time your favourite best of James Brayshaw moments. Uh, We also, we launched a lot of segments uh, last week, and they've all proven very popular. Uh, 
including this next one, uh, which all started when I watched the Muppets movie and became obsessed with the song Rainbow Connection. This segment is called Pondering Like Kermit. Hey, whole Kermit the Frog here. It's Pondering Like Kermit. What is the point of this segment? Okay. Lots of explaining on this podcast, don't you reckon, Pat? Which is like, I feel like I always have to explain to people what we're doing because this podcast is so stupid. I mean, look, if if the listeners aren't willing to have it explained once again, then really, I think they're horrible listeners. Yeah, so they should stop listening. No, no, no please don't keep stop listening. listening. Don't please stop. Keep listening. Don't no. stop. Keep listening. In fact, listen to this twice. Um, I need my job. <laughs> basically, pondering like Kermit is this segment in which you. Basically, at the start of the song Rainbow Connection by Kermit the Frog, essentially, Kermit the Frog is just pondering. Like, he just, he sings. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? Yeah, he's singing a song, but, like, he's also just pondering a fact. Pondering a fact. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? Somewhere over the rainbow. Um... Rainbow Connection. In Rainbows, In the Rainbows, album. In Rainbows, the album by Radiohead. Yes, of course. <laughs> um, so I ask you guys, send in your pondering like Kermits. Someone sent one in last week. It was, why are there so many remakes of Godzilla? And then we talked about Godzilla. It's sort of a springboard for discussions, right? Now, one person who... One person submitted, and uh, I don't know this person's name. You didn't leave your name when you sent a message to the podcast phone number, but welcome to the radio family anyway. Um, So radio Anon, I guess. And Pat, I'd actually be interested. You you should have a listen to this because you've definitely, you you understand, this person understands the segment, right? He understands what you're supposed to do, but what he doesn't understand, I think, and no offense, like this was a great submission, except you didn't understand that you're supposed to do it to the tune of Rainbow Connection. You're not supposed to just like meander a melody that you've come up with. Oh, so no. this is what was submitted. Why are there so many films about murderers? Like seriously, this is f***ing weird. What's with 14-year-old white girls and their obsessions with them? <laughs> so, what was that? So, so it's like, it is a ponder. We can agree oh, yeah. it's a ponder. Totally a ponder. But it was not to the tune of Rainbow Connection. Basically, the ponder that he did, and I bleeped out the swear word. He didn't bleep him out. He didn't bleep himself out That'll be live. an incredible feature. I can bleep myself. Yeah, live. Um, Why are there so many movies about murderers? And then he says the F word and says, what's with 14-year-old girls and liking movies about murderers? Which is interesting. Um, I don't know. I guess... And this is sort of what the segments is about. We then, because that is a ponder. I would love for you to send it in. Because what I would have done is, why are there so many? And that's usually the first line. Why are there so many movies about murderers? And that would have, that's a pondering like Kermit. So what you've done is you've pondered, but you haven't pondered like Kermit. That's the issue, I think, Pat. He hasn't pondered like Kermit. He's just generally he's just pond- pondering. Yeah, and, <laughs> and the the conceit of the segment is yeah. Yes, you are here to ponder, but you are supposed to be pondering like Kermit. Pat, ponder like Kermit for us. Uh, why are there so many people moving houses? Yeah, that's a ponder like Kermit. Now, here's that not here's that <laughs> as a ponder, but not like Kermit. Why are there so many people moving houses, right? I've pondered. I haven't pondered like Kermit. And like Radio Anon... And we appreciate every submission to this show, but you haven't, you, you, you have, you've done 50% of the homework, basically. You've handed in your assignment. You haven't done the whole assignment. I would say this is more lamenting than pondering. Oh, I don't know. I think he's pondering. Like, I do think he's pondering. He's just not pondering like Kermit. No. Why are there so many people not pondering like Kermit. <laughs> you can fit anything in, really. Feel for, use as many syllables as you need. But yeah, like I would, I, I will answer your question. Why are there so many movies about murders? I think as people, we are just like, we're interested in death and murder. Like we're interested in the gruesome and the gory because I think it shows us how crazy life can bloody be. That's what I'd say. That's my answer to you. Um, 
Guys, send in your pondering like Kermit's. They're easy to do. Well, apparently they're not that easy to do <laughs> because like you can ponder, but lots of people are not pondering like Kermit. Please, that's I've used this as an example of a ponder, but not like Kermit. So in future, I would appreciate some more people pondering on the hotline, but like Kermit. The crucial part of this, because, and this is the the other thing, anyone can ponder. That's the the point of the segment is that anyone can ponder but not everybody can ponder like Kermit, and we've we've proved that. So next week, I want a new pondering like Kermit. Can be from you, Radio and on Leave Your Name this time. Maybe even justify why you did what you did, because I'd be interested in that. But please do it in a Kermit fashion. Thank you. Huge news in the... Uh, in the, in the world. The, I think I'd just say the world. The world. Huge news in the world. World news. Um, and uh, the headline is, Love is Not Real. Bum, bum, bum. And the, the the reason I say this, and you know, over your life, take it from me. I'm 26. I've lived a lo- long and happy life. Over your life, you might fall in love many times, several times, maybe one time. I've, you know, have I been in? I I try not to fall in love, uh, because it's easy to get hurt. And I'll tell you, who, <laughs> I'll tell you who knows that really clearly. Bill Gates. Because Bill Gates and his soon-to-be ex-wife, Melinda Gates, proved to the world in the last week that love is not real. And you know why? Bill Gates, one of the richest people in the world, cannot stay married. Now, that's pretty incredible, isn't it? That's like, you have billions and billions of dollars. You could invent a love potion but you don't. And now you're getting a divorce. If Bill Gates, one of the richest and most successful people in the world, can't keep a girl, who can? Who can? No one is safe when it comes to love, especially Bill Gates. And this totally shocked me because I guess we're conditioned to think that, you know, the more money you have, the easier it is to like, because a lot, they say, I guess this is where I'm getting at. They say, at least in Australia, that most divorces, most divorces in Australia or or relationship breakdowns, like romantic relationship breakdowns, come down to money, right? People arguing over money. Bill Gates is a billionaire and he's still got a divorce. What are they arguing about? Having too much money? I just don't understand how he's like, what, what? How could Bill Gates get a divorce? He can literally pay for anything. Like all these problems can be solved by money. Someone fill me in on how you can get a divorce when you're a billionaire. No, this is so disrespectful to all the billionaires out there. I'm sure you're great people. Oh no, the billionaires, the one people we have to worry about. <laughs> No, no, billionaires are not great people. I actually think it's important. There are no, you don't become a billionaire without, like to become a billionaire at some point you have to do something dodgy. Like you, you don't just become a billionaire by accident. You have to like unethically get there. There are no ethical billionaires. So I guess my point is love is dead if you, if a billionaire can't stay married or can't stay in a relationship None of us can. And if you were planning on falling in love in any time in the near future, can I recommend not doing it? Because you know what? Even if you have a billion dollars, you'll still get a divorce. Bill and Melinda Gates, my heart goes out to you because also the the other thing is, like one, you're dividing up your fortune, which I guess is fair because like, you know, you're both going to still be billionaires, which is fine. I guess my thing is that, like, if Bill Gates goes on Tinder, for instance, he knows that everyone matching him knows who he is and knows he's a billionaire. You could never trust that someone actually loves you for you and not to get a piece of the Bill Gates pie, the Microsoft pie. Do you think Bill Gates makes pie charts on Microsoft Excel? I don't know why I did that. I said that. That was oh. stupid. He probably does, though. I don't know, but I'll tell you what. He uh, he definitely wouldn't be interested in uh, apple pies, oh, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, I see what I did there, competing um, companies. Yeah, I did. Uh, Good. I yeah, just had like, to make sure. 
Bill Gates must know that every woman who shows an interest, like he's probably, he's like 70 as well. Why get a divorce at 70? I'm sorry, Bill Bill Gates, come on. Like, why are you getting a divorce at 70? That's such a strange thing for me to wrap my head around. Like, you're 70, man. You're going to be dead in 10 years. You're not going to live a new life by then. Why are there so many <laughs> 70 year olds getting divorced? <laughs> like, but seriously, why would you get a divorce? But if you're still married at 70, just be like, you know, like this would be fu- this is fine. You're not going to so- I'm sorry, Bill, but you're not going to have like another life like you've got a f- 10 years left. You may as well just stay with Melinda. I'm sorry to say you have 10 years. You, you know, at best you've got 30 years left, which is a- actually 30 years is quite a long time. Get a divorce. Get married again. I don't know. Anyway, Bill and Melinda Gates, love is dead, guys. Love is dead. All right, I'm very upset about love being dead, but unfortunately we do have to move on with the show. And uh, I guess a little update today on uh, another segment that I guess kind of pseudo replaced Lost in Translation, but hey, here we are doing them both on the show. It's a segment called this. It's It's this movie that I think you'll like. And uh, I want to say at the top here, uh, first of all, this segment is obviously based on the Vance Joy song Riptide in which Vance Joy sings. There's this movie that I think you like. This guy decides to quit his job and heads to New York City. We uh, have gone on a long road with this. We did find out that that movie is called Midnight Cowboy. And now we do a segment on the show where we recommend movies to each other through Vance Joy's method. Because basically, Vance Joy recommended the movie Midnight Cowboy to millions of people through his song Riptide, right? Which was a hev- a hugely successful song. Now we're we're doing that too. You know, choose a movie. Pat, did you want to do one this week? Just choose a movie and recommend it to people that, that they uh, think they'd okay, like. Okay, sure. <clears throat> yeah. There's this movie that I think you'll like. This guy decides to leave his town and become an animator and do some really fucked up jokes in the meantime and also put some sausages together in a piano and go, Daddy, would you like some sausage? I have no idea what that movie it's is. It's Freddy Got Fingered. No, don't tell. Oh. Now the- <laughs> yeah, well, uh, there you go, guys. It's fr- Apparently it's that. Well, now there's no point even playing. Feel free to send your submissions in anyway. But anyway, Pat, and please, <laughs> you're off for this segment because you just ruined the segment. Basically... Pat, uh, Pat actually cut together a TikTok because we are on TikTok, Radio Mike, follow us. Uh, Pat cut together a TikTok of the Vance Joy thing, which like, honestly, we weren't expecting it to be big. It is on- I think it's at 40,000 views. It's on f- nearly up to 50,000. It's 49.1 thousand. I did say you were off for this segment, Pat. I don't know why you're still- uh, Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll continue my vow of silence. All good, all good. Um- I also did another real uh, TikTok, which I might I might cut in, I might not, but I basically on YouTube I did a review of the new Mortal Kombat movie, and in that I had this little sketch about uh, all all movies based on video games are bad, and I basically did it just turned that into a TikTok, which now has twenty five thousand views. Weirdly, did not expect it, and uh, all these nerds fighting in the comments. There's like two hundred comments, and everyone's really angry at me. So go and watch that on TikTok if you're so inclined. That's been really well. So the TikTok is growing, the reels are growing as well, which is awesome. Uh, but back onto this segment. So obviously Pat ruined it before in his typical Pat way, but uh, there's been a there's been a long running thing on the podcast with this segment. Uh, Radio Shooter is his name. Welcome to the Radio Family again, Radio Shooter. Loyal listener of the show. Uh, you will notice behind me on the video version of the pod, the 20th Century Board, where we list all the goals on the show. And if you look at number, number three and four are linked. Number three is we want to get Vance Joy on the show to do a live this movie that we think you'd like. Um, number four, watch Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium, a, f- a movie. The reason for that is because essentially Radio Shooter, every time we do one of these, calls up the show and says he thinks it's Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. And I called him out last week. I called him out for what it was. He was trolling the show. He was being a nuisance. He was making a mockery of the show and the segment. And frankly, I was sick of it. I called him out. And uh, look, Shooter has... Uh, sent a voicemail in to the hotline. 
and he has a retort. Um, so look, I, uh, for the interest of, of free speech and, you know, due process, I want to give Shooter the chance to retort. Basically, the last instance of this was in response to Radio Kira's movie that I think you'd like. Hers was, there's this movie that I think you like. This guy decides to click his fingers and delete half the population, which I believe was, I said was Avengers Infinity War. Thanos does exactly that. And uh, I thought that was correct. Anyway, Shooter's retort to all of this and being called out public, publicly on the show is uh, as follows. Shooter, take it away, mate. Hello, Radio Mike. Radio Shooter here, responding to some pretty damning accusations. Honestly, just can't believe it. Here I am just trying to play along in this friendly game and, and get accused of, of being a troll. Just, oh, mate, just brings tears to my eyes, you know, just Sorry, trying mate. to play along. I don't... <laughs> I don't even want to play this week. I mean, well, I do want to play because I'm pretty confident. It's pretty obvious that it's Mr. McGoran's Wonder Emporium, but yeah, no, just just threw me, mate, threw me. So yeah, really rattled, just disappointed, just trying to play a game, play along with the radio family, but too hard for some, I guess. <laughs> you better invite me to that Monopoly game as well, mate. Oh yeah, so much happening in that. Uh, so shooter pretty defensive there and he, it's his right to maintain his innocence of course um a few things about that one i'm sorry that i offended you shooter we do appreciate your contributions to the show um and i'm still suspicious the reason i am suspicious is because and pat maybe you'll know oh yeah he said that this week he said oh i don't even want to play this week but i will play it's pretty obviously mr mcgorium's wonder emporium again but I don't think there was one last week. So he's just... No, I don't remember one. He's just guessed it on a blank week, which to me is very suspicious. But I'll give you the benefit of the doubt because, look, another voicemail did come in this week and it was it was actually from Radio Kira, the original person to submit this. Welcome to the Radio Family, Radio Kira. And Radio Kira sent what is possibly the biggest curveball of all in regards to all of this, uh, Radio Kira had this to say. Hello, hello, hello. It's uh, Radio Kira here back again. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of things I would like to talk about. Okay. Firstly, I'm really sorry for not replying um, and saying the answer for this movie. Like, I forgot. Um, I would actually like to say that Radio Shootout was actually correct. Mr. McGorian's Wonder Emporium was the answer. Uh, Mike, you wouldn't, um, you have not seen Miss McGoran's Wonder Emporium, so you wouldn't know that this is what's happened. So, Radio Shooter, congrats, you won. Um, That was the the movie that I thought you'd like. So, Radio Kira has (laughs) blown it out of the park by confirming that I was incorrect. She wasn't talking about Avengers Infinity War. She was, in fact talking about Mr. McGorium's Wonder Emporium, and apparently Shooter knew that. And again, she's right. I have not seen Mr. McGorium's Wonder Emporium, so I don't... Pat, have you seen it? Uh, yeah, last time I saw it was in uh, year eight when so we were you, heading to camp. You can't. You couldn't remember it. You're going to have to watch uh, it. I remember parts of it that I can so say, but someone not someone click his fingers and delete half the population? Because that's what's um, being alleged happens. I think there's only one way to find out, Michael. We're going to have to watch it, which is yeah. why it's on the 20th century board. Um, but I'm suspicious. And I guess I've just thought of this. I wasn't originally going to do it, but uh, Shooter... You did mention at the end there that you want to play the Monopoly game. Basically, last week I announced, and more on this later, but I announced on the show that I I have never lost a game of Monopoly and I would like to take on three members of the Radio family in a Monopoly match. House rules. More on that later. Shooter, you said you better invite me to the Monopoly match. This is your official... This is your official invite, particularly if you're in Melbourne. That makes it easy to play Monopoly with me. But here's what I will say. I'm going to watch Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. And if there is no character in... Mis- if there is no event in Mr. Megorium's WE in which someone clicks their fingers and deletes half the population, you will have to play the Monopoly match in an outfit of my choice. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I'm saying. Because, you know, 
How do I know you haven't, you know, worded Kira up to defend you, to back you? I don't know, Shooter. That's why I'm posing this challenge to you. You are in, you are officially invited to the Monopoly match. And speaking of the Monopoly match, Radio Whitey, welcome to the Radio family, Radio Whitey. He would also like to play, so he could be one of your other competitors. And, uh, well, Radio Whitey did have a little bit of a gripe with the whole house rules thing. Um, he was like, he's basically saying like, no, you don't play house rules. You play the, by the rule book. That's how it works. And, you know, all this stuff people think doesn't work. This is how it works. So I actually was intrigued because I guess like at no point in my life have I ever read the rules to Monopoly. Like, I don't know how Monopoly is supposed to be played. I guess just over time, like you play it as a kid and you just play however the person who teaches you to play teaches you, right? So I've just always played by the rules that I've grown up playing, but I don't think they are the official rules, which Whitey seems to know off by heart. Uh, so look, Whitey's joined, Whitey joined me on the line the other day because uh, we couldn't line up the, the time. So I'm going to throw here to me chatting to Whitey about <laughs> how Monopoly actually works Enjoy this. Whitey joins me on the line now. Whitey, there was a bit of a, a bit of a resistance from you in the podcast Discord uh, to play House Rules Monopoly. Did you want to expand on that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, there was. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, I, I don't agree in any scenario with House Rules Monopoly. I'm, I'm very against it, mm. and it's an issue that I'm very passionate about. Um, I don't like people making their own rules. The rules are there for a reason. The, the set comes with the rule book. It doesn't say make up your own. Um, I've, I've never gone to Crown and said, oh, I want to play up to 25 in blackjack because that's, that's my rule. Mm. Um, you know, I, it's, it's not how you play games. I, I can tell that you're frustrated and that I can, under- oh, yeah. I can understand the frustration, but can you... Um, I think you're a reasonable guy. You can understand that I think a lot of people... like just get Monopoly at some point as a kid and their parents Mm. sort of teach them how to play the way that they were taught how to play. And I think it's just like, it's almost like just generationally families are passing on the house rules of Monopoly that they play, right? You can understand that, right? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I I think my issue is, I've been testing this theory for a few years. I'm an only child, no Mm. siblings. And I think people with siblings are more likely to have added rules. There may be parents who had siblings as well. Maybe it is multi-generational. Yeah. But when I've looked around and found a lot of other only children, they also play by the correct rule set as well. That is very So I do wonder if there's a relation there. I was going to ask you, one, yeah. one of the things you pointed out is that is the free that free parking doesn't work the way people oh, think it works. Now, this is a big problem. This I'll, is a massive issue, yeah. I'll explain how I think free parking works. And this is how, like... I have never had played Monopoly with anyone who didn't think it worked this way, which is that, you know, any like fine or community chest or chance cards that make you pay money, you pay that into the middle of the board and throughout the game, money accumulates in the middle of the board. And if you land on free parking, you collect all that money. So is that not how it works? So this is the equivalent of saying in Uno, every time you pick up a red card, you have to dance on the spot. It's a nonsense rule. <laughs> um, there is no <laughs> scenario where money goes into the middle of the board. That's not what it's for. Any money you pay in tax or any other cost in the game goes straight to the bank. There is no middle of the board. There's no area where money collects. That's, that's rubbish. Absolute rubbish. So how does free parking that's- work? What happens if you land on free parking? So- I actually used to, I, I remember, I used to actually um, go and check the rule book so that I could show people this. I don't remember the exact wording, but it's something on the lines of, it literally says free parking is a nothing space. It, the, the entire purpose is just for you to have a rest there. Are it's you not serious? for any purpose. <laughs> oh, yeah. Go, go find yourself a Monopoly rule book. It it's absolutely says so. It is not for any purpose other than you can just have a rest. You don't have to do anything that turn. That is really interesting because that actually makes me wonder. Like, because like, I I'm. It seems like you know this, and it seems like it, I will say mm. every single time I've ever played Monopoly, it is a commonly like. That's probably one of the only rules agree. everyone agrees on, right? That free parking, you collect all the money in the middle over the game, right? 
I'm just Look, now, it doesn't make me popular at parties to bring up. I'll tell you that. Oh uh, yeah, I'm just wondering where where did that come from then? Like who? Where did this urban legend of free parking come from? Do you well, know? That's true. You're right. It is incredibly common. No, I don't know. But you're right. Everyone I knew growing up, um, everyone I've played with as an adult since then, has has had some form of that rule. It's not always exactly the same. There's always arguments on, oh, does the tax go in there or does what I pay for the property go? There's different rules on what goes into the middle. Um, but everyone does seem to have some form of that rule. Yeah. I, um, I, I don't know why. Another rule that seems to be commonly debated, and you probably will know mm. the answer to this, some people play, well, I play, when you're in jail, you can't... Mm earn any money off your properties. Is that a rule? No, that's, that's false. That's not no, no, a rule. <laughs> no, you, uh, the jail rules are actually relatively complex. Um, there's, there's the amount of times you have to, you can roll to get doubles to get out of jail. There's rules that you can make a payment of $50, but after three attempts to roll, you have to pay the $50. But you absolutely can still earn money whilst in jail. Okay. I wanna, you can't earn money off a mortgage property, though. I, I also want to know, when you... There's this thing that I know is an official rule, but I've never played by it, which is that if you land on a property and you choose not to buy it, then it goes to auction. Mm. Who runs the auction? So at the start of the game, you pick a banker um, who's generally also the auctioneer. Okay. So generally speaking, for I think it's up to eight players, and generally if you're less than six players, they'll just be the same person. Yeah. Um, you can split it if you have more. In actual fact, it, I, I'm pretty sure remembering back on the rule book, it's been a few years, I think uh, above a certain number of players, above six, they recommend having a dedicated banker slash auctioneer. Wow, okay. Well, this is all interesting. Now, you have obviously, you want to play the 20th Century Boy Monopoly game, which will be coming up soon, but you you yeah. don't you don't want to play house rules, right? Uh, look, I've, I've played them before, and I've beaten them before, but no, I prefer to play in a more Puritan way. All right. What about this? We will play the official Monopoly rules. It will be Simpsons Monopoly because that's what I've got, but we will play the official Monopoly rules, Simpsons Monopoly version. And Mm -hmm. except at any two points of the game, right? At any two points of the game, I can say house rules bypass and I can bypass... I can so buy, basically two, two vetoes. Basically, I get two vetoes of the of the official rules if something doesn't go in my favour. I can just say on the spot, house rules bypass, and we have to play by by the house rules. Okay, but can we clarify before that what the house rules are that you're calling in? Yes, you can't we, just say, "Oh, I get to that, go around that, the board." Next we, to within now. within reason, within reason, yeah. Okay. We we will clarify the rules coming up to the game, but do you accept that? Sure. That, that's fine. That seems reasonable. Okay, awesome. Well, Whitey, you are the first person to be playing the Monopoly game, which will be at some point in the future. We don't really know when. Yes. Uh, but uh, thank okay. you so much for coming on. I think I want to try... I'm going to try and get onto someone from Hasbro, who I'm assuming is the people that make Monopoly, Um and uh, I'm going to try and get a clarification on the official rules. Sure, yeah, no worries. All right. Thanks, Whitey. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Mike. There you go. Thanks, Whitey. We will line up the Monopoly game soon. Still room for one more person to play, so please submit, particularly if you're in Melbourne. Uh, that would be awesome. Shooter, I assume you're in Melbourne, by the way. If you're not, well, you've put a spanner in the works. We might have to fly you down, but the show has no budget, so probably not. Um, all right, I Patreon. planned on doing. Slash radio mic. I pl- I planned on doing a follow up uh, to the average ordinary everyday superhero segment that we've been doing on the show, where we all submit our own average superheroes. Uh, so far, we've got Plastic Plastic Man. Uh, Sergeant Scissors, and a few more have come in. I intend on doing that next week because something more pressing has come up. And this is like... One of my uh, friends and friend of the show, uh, MDF manager Harrison, old friend of mine, went to primary school together, uh, worked together at Dan Murphy's in Q for a while. Um, But this story is not about the MDF. But this story... Remind. I was reminded of this story 
because Harrison, Radio MDF manager Harrison and I caught up. He's back in Melbourne. He's been in California for the past few years. He's moved back to Melbourne. And I don't know if this story is going to be funny to the listeners, but I have to tell this story and record it somewhere. Someone has to hear this story. Um, This is the William Kennedy story. <laughs> and I'm already laughing. And the, and and the subject of this story, William Kennedy, his name has not been changed. This is the William Kennedy story. If you know a William Kennedy, it may be this William Kennedy. Um, here's the story. Basically, as I said, Harrison and I went to primary school together at a school called Sacred Heart Primary School in Q. Lots of great people at, at SHPSQ. And... In grade two, and I should, I should, uh, I should go back a bit. This, I, I've, I only was reminded of this yesterday when, when I caught up with Harrison, right? And he, and we were talking about, uh, how's bloody this person from primary school, bloody that. And then Harrison just goes, ah, oh, what about William Kennedy? Remember him? <laughs> and I was like, yes, I remember William Kennedy because I remember this one story about him from grade two. And William Kennedy, like, I have not seen you in a very long time, and I mean a very long time. But if you happen to listen to this podcast, welcome. You you probably already know what this story is about. Anyway, it's grade two. Our teacher, Miss McGill, is our teacher. That, that was a dumb sentence, but anyway. It's towards the end of the year, and uh, for whatever reason in Australia, in like, primary school, you, Pat, you just sighed. Is everything okay? No, no, you're I not just, enjoying the William no, Kennedy no, 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 story? I just, uh, Say you're enjoying the William Kennedy <laughs> I'm story. I'm enjoying the William Kennedy story. This is incredible, Mike. This is the greatest <laughs> podcast ever. Please give us five stars on iTunes and contribute to patreon.com forward slash radio Mike. No, I'm just sighing because uh, I'm just working on a thumbnail in the background and I just messed right. something up. But well, anyway. I'm going to turn your mic off so you don't yeah. interrupt the William yeah, Kennedy sounds, story. Yeah, sounds good. All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> um, so anyway, it's grade two and- In Australian primary school, there's this thing, at least in Melbourne, it's called integrated studies. And I don't even know what it is. It's like a specialty topic you study each term. Like, for example, term one, we're doing outer space. Term two, we're doing under the sea. And in term four of grade two, our integrated studies topic was farms. We were doing farms. And with farms, (laughs) farms <laughs> and this is exactly how I told this story to Harrison last night when we got a beer with farms we had to do a farm project and I don't remember any detail about the farm project other than it was like weekly installments of little tasks related to farm farms including like posters dioramas dia what are those things that are like is that a diorama, like the shoebox thing where you... Di- uh, Pat's mic's off. Diorama? Yeah. Yeah, I think diorama. that's what it's called, yeah. Yeah, dioramas, posters, you know, little whatever about farms. And, you know, we're all these little year twos and we're all working our way at our farm projects, right? Every week we're all standing up. This is my farm project. I did cows next week. Oh, this is my diorama. It's a pig sty at a farm uh week three uh this is my you know little play about farms all of us did it you know all 30 kids in the class or whatever did the farm project except for one one student in the class (laughs) did not at any point do any of the tasks related to the farm project it was william kennedy (laughs) and then No one seemed to care, not even the teacher. Well, the teacher basically kept, like, pushing, like, kept asking William Kennedy in front of the class, like, William, where's your farm project? He's like, I haven't done it. William, next week, where's your farm project? Still haven't done it. Where's your farm project? Haven't done it. So I just kept, I kept it up, right? I kept going to Will, like, because I was annoyed. I was putting all this work into my farm project. I go to William Kennedy, William, when, when are you doing your farm project? I don't know. William, you got to do your farm project. I don't know. We all do the farm project, except William. He gets away with it. The year's over. We're all marked. I don't know what happened to his mark for integrated studies. I don't know. Grade three. 
every time I bump into William Kennedy, we're in different classes now, but I just go up to him as a joke and I go, hey, William, where's your farm project? <laughs> it's a year overdue. He just goes, ha, 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 ha. Grade four, same thing. End of grade four, I leave that school. I go to a different school. And I don't see William Kennedy again. <laughs> Six years later, <laughs> in year 11, I, so I'm in year 11, second last year of high school. I'm on the tram home from school. And I look across the tram and I see someone <laughs> and I recognize him. It's William Kennedy. <laughs> It's no William way. Kennedy from afar on the other side of the tram. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, is that William Kennedy? And my other friend Fraser was on the tram with me and he also went to that primary school. And I was like, hey, Fraser. Do you- Pat, you be Fraser. Uh, oh, oh Fraser. Fraser. Oh, wait. Hey, Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> Who's who? Uh, you're Fraser, I'm me. Okay. It's pretty simple. Hey, Fraser. Yeah? Is that William Kennedy? I think it is, Michael. Yeah. So William Kennedy, you know, he's at a different school in year 11 as well. I go up to him. I look at William Kennedy. I'm like, hey, William Kennedy, is that you? He goes, yeah, hey, how's it going? And I say, when are you finishing your farm project? (laughs) This is like 10 years after the farm project, but like, Basically, William Kennedy's whole legacy to me in my life is that he didn't finish his farm project. So I'm putting it out there on the 20th Century Boy podcast. William Kennedy, wherever you are now, I have not seen you. I reckon that time on the tram was the last time I saw you, which was 2011. So that was 10 years ago. So there was like, I saw you in grade two, three, and four. Six year, no, seven year gap to year 11, 10 year gap to 2021. So William Kennedy, I'm putting it out there. I will pay you money. If you, if this somehow gets back to you, I will pay you money to finish your grade two farm project and present it on this podcast. I will pay you $200 for the meme of you finishing the grade two farm project in front of an audience of listeners of this show, William Kennedy. I know that, like, I know that there are probably people who listen to this podcast somewhere who know a William Kennedy, and I want you to check if it's the same William Kennedy that I know who didn't finish their farm project. William Kennedy? Pat, is this one for the 20th century board? I think it might be. We got to put up on the board... Uh, I can't wear the... Oh, oh, here's the, the mark. Yeah, down the there. You, you can get rid of number seven. Oh, number seven, it. Pat's put on. <laughs> it's give Pat more money, which is no. Number seven... Hit me up for my PayPal. I'm just going to put WK, William Kennedy, farm project. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Hope we hear from you, Will. <laughs> All right, enough about William Kennedy. He's gotten way too many plugs on this show. Let's do this. The plug... This is the plug. Thanks, Pat. This is the plug, uh, basically where I plug everything I would like you to check out this week. And there is a bit Harry Potter and the Boys tomorrow uh, with Pat. Pat is on the... And it was a really funny episode. It was great. I may be a bit biased, but I would go as far as to say best podcast episode ever made in the history of ever. There you go. go Except watch for it. the upcoming Farm Project special. Oh, that'll blow it under the water for sure. I'm I'm on edge. Last week was uh, one of my good mates, Josh Perring, also really funny, better than Pat's. Um, oh. But, but uh, no, they were both really good. So please check them out. Harry Potter and the Boys is great. We are slowly migrating the video version of Harry Potter and the Boys to its own channel on YouTube. I'm not going to put them on the Radio Mike YouTube channel anymore uh, just because it's it messes with the YouTube algorithm. So keep an eye out for that. That'll be launching very soon. Um, and please share that with your friends. Share this podcast with your friend. The YouTube Radio Mike uh, is growing uh, slowly, slowly. It is growing. A um, couple of videos I want you to check out. My Mortal Kombat review I already talked about. Please check that out. That was a lot of fun to make. And as well as that, I also did the April edition of my monthly movie vlog, Mike's Monthly Movies. 
There are now four versions of that. Uh, some people are saying like my videos don't get don't come up for them, even though they're subscribed to me, which is really annoying. Again, I think that's an algorithm thing. Um, but yeah, go type in Radio Mike on YouTube. Check out a bunch of my videos. There's heaps of TV show stuff. I've I've done a rev- uh, I did a video about the movie Brother Bear, uh, the Disney movie Brother Bear, and why I think it's underrated. I did a video about the Amazon Prime TV series Invincible and why you should watch it right now because it's amazing. Uh, and uh, I watched the last episode episode of that last night and it was awesome. The TikTok, Radio Mike. We're also doing a lot of reels on Instagram, radio.mike. Email the show anytime, radiomikepod at gmail.com, 1-800-438-353 to send a voicemail to me. And, of course, Patreon. Uh, Pat, who's been part of the show, this has been awesome. Like, it's just, we just, Pat was here for Harry Potter and the Boys. I'm like, do you want to just stay and, like, be in the room for 20th Century Boy as well? And, like, it was awesome having you on, man. So Thanks, like, man. It was great to be here. Hope I wasn't too annoying to the uh, oh, the listeners. I thought it was great, but the listeners might disagree, man. I don't oh, know. Oh, well, true. No. Well, hey, <laughs> if you like me and you want to see more of me, uh, patreon.com forward slash radio mic. Get yeah. me on. Basically, all of, if you would give a dollar a month to me for all of the stuff I do, you can do that on Patreon on the tip jar tier, patreon.com slash radio mic, paypal.me slash it's radio mic. You can also buy some merch. There's a bunch of stickers that you can buy, radiomic.com.au. Check out the website as well for just all of my content there. Um, but yeah, the more money we make on the Patreon, the more stuff I can get Pat to do. And Pat's really good at his job. So I oh, want him please. to do more stuff. Like he cuts all the reels. He cuts all the TikToks. We've been growing heaps since we became a two-man operation. Um, and on the Patreon, you get the bonus, the Mike's podcast with all of the characters that Pat mentioned before. And uh, that first episode was great. I'm going to try and do them once every three weeks or so. So there should be another one soon. Exclusive to Patreon. You can't get that anywhere else uh i think that's pretty much it so thank you so much for listening my name has been radio mike and i will end the way i always end this has been the end yeah yeah. this has been the inside of my mind don't block the mdf i am a very kind young man and some of your older staff could learn a lot from me don't lie to me because i'll see you and then i'm adding a new one make sure you finish your farm project don't leave it 10 don't leave it 10 years and if i see you tonight it might be at the dream factory catch you later guys pat sign off for us grab This podcast was a Radio Mike original production. Head to radiomike.com.au to check out all our other content. Stay up to date at radio.mike on Instagram and get in touch. Radiomikepod at gmail.com.